All right, so uh, I'm a little later this morning than I wanted, but I was pretty late last night, so cheers to all that. Um, let's go ahead and take a look here at the, this is the next part of the puzzle. Uh, this is gonna be page six we're working on. I just gotta click into all the signal boosty stuff, so give me a hot second here to take a look at, make sure my stream is doing what it's supposed to do. Check, check. Doing what it's supposed to do. Cool. And then I'm going to press a bunch of buttons and then get back to work. So give me a hot second here. Uh, Elemental Key is coming along really nicely. Um, I am expecting to, let's see, after I finish this piece that we're looking at, I've got, uh, I got one more illustration to do, and then I uh, need to uh, build, uh, layout, um, um, design, uh, graphic design, the, um, the, the uh, elemental key playmat that, uh, uh, that you, you can, you know, move tokens around to show what your uh, sustaining uh, effects for and um, all the yada yada. So like moving mana from from your key pool to being tapped or um, or locking or then moving into being burned and then refreshing. It's uh, since there since it's uh, since it's it's spell points effectively. It's uh, it's easy just to push them around the page. And uh, so I want to make sure that I already have one built uh, in uh, uh, tap and tap burn uh, five color mana spell point variant rule core mechanics as well as for uh, Knights and Tricksters, uh, both of which are on DM's Guild. But neither one of those, um, uh, this, this is a little different than either one of those because this is a, uh, a five character class progression. No, yeah, a five spell level progression, which is different from um, either Knights and Tricksters or just generic mana. So I want to make sure I have a unique play mat for people to implement specifically if they're using elemental key in the way of the four elements. And it'll be a play map that can be used across all the different uh, key mechanic books that I'm building for monks over the next year or so. Uh, next one I'm going to build is gonna be the Kinsei, uh, which is going to be a, uh, <clears throat> a, a different type of, uh, it's martial, it's martial mana as opposed, or martial key as opposed to elemental key because Kinseis don't care about elements. But uh, once I get this elemental key built, uh, it's gonna, it'll establish language for having a four elemental magic system, um, the, the magic paradigm for general use in D&D. So I can then go back in and I can implement the same mechanics for sorcerers or for clerics, like if you're doing a, Eric Sun campaign and you want to have elemental clerics then we can use elemental key to convert stuff into uh, into elements there as well so it's pretty it's pretty flexible uh, again I'm not detailing a lot of time on the uh, mechanics of uh, chaka 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 word I'm trying to use. Uh, I'm, I'm not diving into the, uh, into the specifics about all the mechanics here, like all, all the rules and stuff, and like how to use it until I actually get the artwork done so that when the book is actually done, I can take like 20 minutes or something like that and like just walk through all the different pages so you can see what I did <clears throat> and it'll all be laid out and stuff. But right now I'm just doing art production. So let's, uh, let's produce some art. I've got about an hour and a half on the board here. I'm going to... Uh, give myself a timer of, let's say, 25 minutes for me to, uh, to work on this Durger. And once I have that, I'll probably be able to switch over to the Drow. So, um, that is not what I intended. Console. Stort. Hmm. Copy fuels my blood. Awaken the Muse. And okay, cool, let's get back to work. So boop, boop, I just merged this all down so I can uh, just paint over and clean up uh, references here. Uh, Druger from Pathfinder, some Druger art here from, I think, I don't need to have the uh, Ice Elemental anymore. But yeah, we got some, we got some color references here that we can, I've already dipped into. And uh, chaka 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 chaka. It's gonna keep at it now. So zoom. Burp. All 
use this new brush tool that I built. Looks like we're shaping up to have a decent play test on uh, January 1st for the 8th level Eberron Karnath adventure that I've been building with uh, Andy Healy, the old goat. And uh, boy, he's prolific. His, um, he's got, let me get that camera facing on me. All right. Um, yeah, so it uh, looks like his Cthulhu stuff is taking off, which is freaking fantastic as uh, Europe loves Cthulhu. And so that's a really good market. If I was into horror genre at all, I would dive into Cthulhu like just forever. Uh, unfortunately, my passion is involved with color mana and D and D specifically, so that'll change eventually. I love the, I love five E and D twenty games in general. I mean, I've been I've been playing D and D since I was like twelve, so like in the eighties. Uh, what is that? Eighties? Yeah, like eighty seven, something like that. So long term, <clears throat> long term fanatic. Um, I'm, I'm interested to see what new iteration uh, Wizards comes up with for D&D &D in general, though it's at some point I'll probably be breaking out and like taking taking the, all these different types of mechanics that I'm building and then codifying them into just its own its own game environment. Like a separate, a separate campaign that's its own build. Um, speaking of which, I am um, thrilled to be uh, introducing my cousins on the East Coast over Zoom uh, to um, you know a, a, a role-playing crash course by me running a uh, essentially a one-shot, a series of one-hour uh, dinner time adventures <clears throat> that will uh, has like super super simplified character classes and uh, and this uh, in this. Uh, wilderness and dungeon adventure scenario that uh, that I developed over time as an introduction to people to role playing games and so it they're they're much easier they're not complicated character sheets the goal the goal of these sessions isn't to convince you know, you know to, to teach uh, my cousins how to play d and d specifically but to help them decide if they like role playing games at all. And thus, it's worth the effort of learning how to play the actual rules of D&D &D with the actual core rule books, or if they want to explore a different game. The, but if they, the, the, the session will do all the things that a Phil does as a DM, which should help them understand you know, the concepts of teamwork, dice rolling, decision making, and improvisation and if that's something that they jive with and and if any if it grabs any of their attention and they, they want to know more then they can choose to either invest in D, D books specifically or just start connecting with their local gaming community and uh and find out if um, you know what other games are out there that are different from D, &D that they might enjoy anyway so uh, I'm not trying to sell them on D&D specifically. I'm just helping them assess if it's worth their time to even explore it further. So it's going to be like probably three or four sessions, hour apiece. Uh, quick, punchy, let them roll a lot of dice, uh, let them get in trouble, see if they can bail themselves out, uh, maybe maybe experience a couple deaths so they can they can feel the pain of loss and lack a connection to a character so that they can continue to evolve but uh yeah and at the end of it they should be like yeah this is pretty cool i'm, I'm going to do more of this i want to do more of this and if that's the case then then they can go off and i can i can hand them like you know mcdm's list of of how to dm and like dungeon craft and some of the channels that i like to listen to so that they can start getting on the same wavelength <clears throat> it's fun playing playing one hour adventures like one hour sessions of D D is uh, almost outlandish. It just re it just requires that you be that that you maintain a lot of momentum that you don't waste people's time. So like the character sheets are super simplified. Um, like each like I, I have nine characters 
and uh, and some illustrations that go along with each character. Like this is what this character is like, and then like they have like three things they can do uh, each rest, and then they can take a shorter or long rest whenever they want. But whenever they take a rest, it, they'll have you know they're they're like something they're like an amalgamation of like first to third level <clears throat> with some uh, with some higher with, with some like unnaturally high level things that they can do once per day. So it's it's just designed to give them the flavor of each class. Like this is what you can do. These are the type of things that you can expect. Like the barbarians. Like I built this berserker barbarian, and like one of his abilities is once per like once per rest, he can lift anything. <laughs> so you can lift it up, and like you can throw it or you can move it, but you can lift you can lift anything once per rest. So like if you find a porticulus, it's like no problem. I can lift that. It's like it, it solves problems, but if they don't choose that character, they don't have access to that to that option. So, and I'm I'm still fleshing out what all those different little things are because it's just a one shot. You can you can break the game any way you want for a one shot, and it, it, the the point is to make it fun and punchy. It's like oh that's crazy that I can do that. It's like well that's magic. So cheers. Anyway, I'm super rambly this morning, probably because I'm exhausted. a new artist I found on Epidemic. I don't know if I like him or not. I'm still assessing that. They use a lot more lyrics than, I'm, than I, I think I prefer, so I'm probably going to bail on this channel here in a second. It has some, it has some really cool, punchy... Um, uh, Indian flair, like India... Like, like it had like some Bollywood feel to it, which I, I was digging, but uh, it's a lot more variant, um, a lot more variety in style than than I had anticipated. So, I don't think oh, I like that nose. That guy looks cool. Yeah, I'm gonna bail on this channel. <clears throat> Just gonna flat out bail on the channel. Let's. Uh... Let me hear. See a Seymour. This channel I'm enjoying a lot. This is Blue Steel. This song in particular is Amun Ra. And, uh, this is the kind of groove that I really like.
Good stuff. It reminds me of um, Dissolved Girl from um, uh, Massive Attack. That's the vibe that I get off this song. I think that's why I like it so much. That, if you don't know Dissolved Girl, it's the... Uh, Go watch the original Matrix movie. That is the, uh, I mean, you can just look up Massive Attack, Dissolve Girl. But uh, for reference, that is the song that Neo is listening to in the Matrix when he falls asleep at his keyboard and it's playing in his ear when he gets woken up by, uh, by the mescaline dealers. Cool song. Massive Attack is a pretty cool band. I, I dig their work a lot. Been a fan of theirs for quite some time. I'm going to grab this. Do that. I like how that sits. Okay. Man, I can't get enough of Screen Rants. Um, uh, Ryan George YouTube channel. It's so funny. He does these screen pitches uh, where uh, he plays the role of a, uh, a screenwriter and uh, also uh, talking to himself as a uh, as a, uh, a movie producer executive, and he's selling them on the pitch of the movie. And so and then and then the the producer has all these like you know questions, but all he really cares about is money. So the, the screenwriter can get him to do what he wants by, by reminding him how much money he's going to make, regardless of how stupid the movie is. And, and he really just emphasizes how dumb so many of the decisions are uh, throughout the course of the movie, like the decisions that the characters make or, or how the premise or, or how the plot is set up or how the story progresses and, or sometimes how creepy the film is. It's, it's really funny. Like, like, just laugh out loud, hilarious, and it just it doesn't stop. There's hundreds of them, and if you're already familiar with it, then kudos to you. But I am, I am thrilled to have found something just so freaking funny. There is, there is no end to how much hilarity is out there on the internet for people just to enjoy. And I am, I am thrilled to be discovering these things. Nice. Okay, yeah, I'm pretty pleased with that. So we're going to let that sit for a minute. Let's drop into... Let's work on this back arm. Simple flop. Okay, well, apparently we're not done here yet.
old man winter is gonna end you. Nice. I ain't got no complaint about that. So let's get back into this arm. That feels all right.
Yeah, like that. No, not like that. Not like that. Like that and that there. Where's that? Just like that. Yeah. All right. Very convincing. Uh, where'd I go? There I am. Hi. Coffee time. <laughs> Say what? Seven o'clock? We're gonna get ourselves another 25 minutes on this guy because that's what I wanna do. So that's what I want. Am I still in this picture? Yeah, here I am. Let's zoom in there so I don't have to move my head so much. <laughs> Come on, man. Posture. Posture is key. Uh, popping that next. Staying alive. My, uh, my upstairs neighbor in this apartment, when they exercise, the floor rattles. And it used to make me angry because it was so disruptive. But now I realize that if I exercise when they exercise, they're healthier than me. So they're certainly in better shape than I am. So I'm, I'm realizing if I exercise when they exercise, then I get to be something closer to as healthy as they are. And instead of being angry about my roof rattling, it's uh, it's an alarm for me to uh, it's an opportunity for me to get more healthy. So that was a fun that was a fun change of pace. But you know, I mean, now I don't mind taking the ten minute breaks during the workday because I work from home. You know, the uh, the 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 societal job that I do that earns the paychecks, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Getting up, walking away from the computer is good for productivity and health. And uh, they seem to they seem to work from home as well. Or I don't know what the hell it is. I haven't met them, and I, I really oughta, because um, they they impact my life so much. <laughs> I should say hi to them, but I'm so 
I'm so just a recluse these days. It's just, it's goofy. It's, it is just my, like my inner introvert has really just flared to life. One, two, three, four, five. Honestly, until now, all I would have done is just shouted at them for disrupting my life so much. But it's now that I'm starting to, to get into uh, into a groove of who they are, of what their routine is, and how my routine can improve because of it. I think I want morale to improve before I go introducing myself as you know, hey, I'm 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 the guy that exercises when you exercise. <laughs> yeah, I'll get there. It's. It's, I think I think it's been I think it's been a blessing that I have not been inspired to actually talk to them because I, I don't want to create enemies. There's no reason for it. I just got to understand them better. Where'd I go? There I am. So far, so good. So what?
the uh, the avatar of stone can actually like sink into stone. I can swim through it. It's uh, it's a liquid or a solid as you as you please. You just you just can't end your turn underground. Otherwise, you get ejected from it. So I can. When I have the, once I get this built, you know, it'll be it'll be a lot more obvious that this guy's just sinking through the ground. Hopefully it'll come across. What is a miss here?
carrying tension in my shoulders. I can tell I'm exhausted. I think I'll get some decent sleep tonight. Not play too late. complaint there. Let's see. Cool. And then here, and then here, and then here, and then here. Boom. 
Where am I at? 725. When I hit save, I'm going to grab some coffee and BRB. I got left here. Five minutes. Okay. I'm going to save there. I'm going to switch gears. And I'm pretty pleased with how that's coming along. So I'm going to switch up. Yeah, I'm going to be bold. And I'm going to duplicate this group and merge it down. Let's do some cleanup here. I'm going to spend the rest of my time doing some drill cleanup and then start looking at doing highlights on her.
Hey, oh. So we got half hour left. Cool. Yeah, the monk in D and D is an interesting creature. It's uh, it's a skirmisher, so like it's designed to to get into a fight, stun or do damage, and then get out, or get into position and then um, lay uh, in, uh, like uh, on a single target, um, get in, cause damage to clear out space, like tr like like uh, clearing trash mobs. So they can uh, they can move into position and then clear out uh, a wave of trash, and then stay put because they aren't being directly threatened. But like when you're facing off against boss fights, um, they they move in, they deal damage or stun, and then get out. So move, hit, evade, and uh, that is um, that that style is akin to the rogue. But uh, the elemental, the um, the the type of resources that they have available to them, uh, especially when you build them as a half caster, is uh, is more akin to a cleric, which uh, which is a support tanky sort of thing. So it's expected to uh, have that front line sustain effect. Uh, some of them, some of them are more. Some of them are more headspace sort of, of casters, but um, um, clerics are, are hard coded as like pseudo tanks that are designed to, uh, as combat medics, to be present and taking hits with the team while you're trying to keep people healed. So they're in this interesting skirmisher slash midline tank sort of circumstance that hasn't really been addressed well and they've they've been given stat like additional uh, ability scores to help improve the armor class but it doesn't improve them enough because it denies them high-end magic gear that would help them pace with armor so i think the easiest solution which i implemented was just to, to allow them to have medium armor and for their uh and then their um as long as they're not wearing heavier armor, they can do monk like like have the monk mobility. Kind of like rangers have have some mobility in medium armor, and um, and barbarians have mobility in medium armor. Uh, the the system's already kind of coded for having that style of play. So that's that's what we implemented here, which is why I'm depicting all of these monks to have this like medium this light medium armor like like uh like chain or um uh leather or uh scale armor because it's it's lighter it's it's got armor but it's uh, it's got protection but it's not heavy tank like hard plate armor it's it's um like if uh Interesting, like Japanese armor, it has a lot of leather on it. It's got it's like chain and leather, not a lot of hard metal plates. It's more like layered, like lamellar, um, which is a, a medium armor, or leather, which is a light armor. Just because it looks like it's got plates and stuff on it, doesn't mean it's actually metal plates or that it's heavy armor. It's just its style. It's it's riveted uh, into position and plates and layers so that it's easy to it's it's more easy to construct so it's uh you got to think about what's the construction versus the protection when you're when you're crafting armor or when you're illustrating it that's a quick little comment there oh my god i'm getting cold <laughs> give me my rope back ah. So cold. Oh.
And it's only 36, and then it's not like I have a heater going constantly. So it's coffee that keeps me warm. So cheers to you, coffee. Ah. While we're talking about armor, I think it's interesting that uh, that dro, drow, whatever, go away. Um, it's a matriarchal society where men are the the evil drow societies are are heavy women dominated. It's a female patriarchy, really. Um, but um, they're they're depicted like men have no status beyond sexual objects. Or fodder for war, and or sacrifices to their demon goddess, uh, but yet they're hypersexualized in so much of the artwork, and I find that ironic. Like uh, that, a, a culture that is about female superiority is playing to sexualized tropes of women, and like Wonder Woman and like the Amazons is like you, you're you're a woman ran society, yet you're being depicted by men as being hypersexualized i think i think they would lean more towards practicality than than aesthetics and so i, I try to introduce that the best i can into the and in how i and how i depict things being clothed or armored like for for practical design as opposed to sexual appeal or gender identification That's a quick little rant, but it's just, it just sticks in my craw. It always has, regardless, regardless of how attractive I may think women are. It's just, it's, it, it doesn't like, that's, you got to survive the day to have fun at night. So like, you know, dress for the occasion, know your audience. And when your audience is trying to kill you, armor up. <laughs> so I don't know. I don't. I don't think that's I, at this stage, at this point in you know twenty first century. I don't think that's much of a hot take. I just. I just think it. I think the old guard still likes because you're when you're playing video games, you're you're the audience and the and the protagonist at the same time. So you you need a the. The, the game wants, because you're going to be staring at that character all the time, the game wants you to appreciate and enjoy what you're looking at, but it also needs to be thinking about um, what the story is being told and what the messaging, the subtle messaging is that goes behind the aesthetic decisions that the design team makes. And and if they're not thinking about it at all, they're, they're not only losing an audience portion that doesn't care about that aesthetic or how attractive a male or a female is they're 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 losing connection to that audience when then when they could be helping maintain the the world environment of how dangerous it is by having armor that properly reflects the dangers that these characters are facing and how they're and how they're resolving them so anyway in rant
I don't, I, again, I don't think that's a hot take these days. But there's, there's talking about it and agreeing that the aesthetic should take a back seat. And then there's actually doing something about it, like not having her tits stick out of her armor. Which is, by, I guess, like the small contribution I can make to the conversation, which is just have better armor. Just keep your girl safe. If you like the girl, keep her safe. My face is still on screen. Hey. No kidding. Wow, thank you so much. That that is I, I really appreciate you, Spambot. Your spam makes my day. I know the algorithms of YouTube are pleased with me when the spam bots put new messages on my board. And I'm thrilled that uh, YouTube has a glitch to demonetize uh, new videos. That's, that's fantastic. That's, uh, that's probably the best feature that YouTube has uh, managed to produce in the past five years of uh, a glitch that takes away your ability to make money on their videos. Cheers, massive overlord, for the blessings that you take away from us. <laughs> in sarcasm. Sorry, I'm a little surly today. I mean, I've only got 36 subscribers, so it's not like I'm monetizing anything right now. I, I suspect I'll have the glitch fixed by the time it becomes a, an issue to me for like in like a year or six years from now. <laughs> D and D art is not is not a fast moving topic that is just pulling tons of people in. But that's okay. I'm not. I, I, I love the idea of being able to, to have, like, like I said before, I'm, I'm looking forward to getting through all the mechanical design work and having that all published so that I have, so I have a, a consistent language to talk about aesthetics in games. It's, I want to I wanna build the tools first and then have the conversation about what those tools allow us to produce. That, I think, is, is the long-term solution here, and I'm really looking forward to that. It's worth it. It's, I got another 30 years left on me. So I can take a year or two to, to build out the tools to have a long-term conversation about what's, what, what can continue to evolve over time. It's probably going to take Wizards another seven or eight years to, to, to build out their MTG IPs anyway. And I don't think 5e is going to go anywhere anytime soon. 
but I think it's a safe relationship to build, even though I don't own the IP. I think I can, I think I can, I can comfortably speak to it for years through a 5e interface. Is that the word I'm looking for? It's, it's the proper language to, to have the conversation, I think. I reckon, I reckon Wizards is probably trying to work on some sort of MTG Planeswalker Omniverse that they, I don't know. It's, it's MTG mechanics. I mean, obviously I've, I've done a ton of work on it, so it's, it's deep. It's, it's deep. It's involved. It requires a lot of mechanic consideration and it is a, uh, a, um, uh, a notable divorce from typical five, like just the D and D genre. You're you're really building a new game, which I think the like the Power Rangers and the Nerds uh, RPGs that they've produced is a good indication that they are attempting to expand the conversation about what five E can be, with the ultimate purpose of having that lean into an MTG where they're not going to be scolded or judged for. Um, the changes that they make to to what is traditional D and D, the the, the five five e uh, sorry uh, color mana is is such a, a different aesthetic than the eight schools of magic that are just so ingrained into Dungeons and Dragons and um, the the uh, MTG revolves around uh, planeswalkers which are like wizards and sorcerers or like high magic casters and so there there's marshals like fighters and stuff those are things that get summoned by your uh, uh, by you as a player to to fight and die in uh, in a day-to-day -day basis like they, they aren't unless they're unless they're a planeswalker themselves um they're they're more like gishes which are like like fighter war like uh, fighter wizard hybrids um, that use their weaponry as like tools of magic. Not so much I'm going to cut through a thousand foes. It's more like I, I have a weapon that I use to cast spells with that um, may be depicted as like a, a massive glowing sword on the battlefield that cuts through things at 500 feet at a time. So I think Wizards is attempting to build a... Um, a narrative where people stop thinking about barbarians as characters they want to play and instead as allies they want to summon and then dispose of uh statistically speaking like they're just they're just a, like a summon dog you know it's like i don't care that dog doesn't have a personality it's just a spirit thing that i summon and then it fights for me and it, if it if it lives or dies it doesn't matter. It's it's disappearing at the end of this turn anyway. It's, it's going back to the nether. So it doesn't even have time to develop a personality. The personality is being reserved for the actual planeswalker that, that the player is depicting in the game. And again, that's that seems to be leaning towards like a full cast or like, like a high wizard, high priest, sorcerer sort of thing. So I think it's going to take a while for, for Wizards to be able to to build that culture in their game base. Because what they're going to be trying to do is pulling people from the card game that are already predisposed to role-playing games and then drop them into a new aesthetic that is not Dungeons & Dragons. So they're, they're kind of fighting their own base. And that is a, that is a, a difficult thread to needle. Needle to thread, sorry. Which I think is why they've been so gun shy about introducing it, and they're just coming out with like these worlds, these 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 MTG worlds to play inside of Dungeons and Dragons because I think they're trying to build that path, and it's going to take a while. Which is fine by me because I mean, obviously, five color man spell point variant rules is something that you can apply to MTG worlds in your D&D &D game now. And I am super proud to have been part of that creation process, regardless of, regardless of how much it jives 
with Wizards Endgame. It's uh, I'm I'm proud to have been part of that creation. And it just kind of opens opens up possibilities for other things like this elemental key. It's it's framed off the same basic mechanics, but it's a different aesthetic. So I can take that I can take that magic paradigm and, and take it in any direction that I want to, which is exciting. Hey, yeah, girl. Blah, 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 bigger. And what is it? It's 7.50. So I'm going to call it there. That's my day. Man, I'm really loving how this is coming together, though. That feels really good. Um... Yeah, so we're gonna we're just gonna keep at this, and I suspect we're gonna have this. Um, this will probably be done. Um, let's see, what is today? Wednesday, so I got tomorrow, and then Friday. Um, this this art will probably this piece will probably be done this weekend, and then I've got one more piece after this, and it's it's a it's a it's a brawl. So there's going to be a lot of active, uh, engaged, uh, interlocking characters, and that might take a little while to parse out. But I suspect um, by Friday next week, all the artwork will be done, and I will then do a stream uh, of me clumsily building a, uh, a, uh, a character sheet for, uh, uh, for using Elemental Key on. That'll be like more graphic design and structure than, than artwork. So it'll be a different, it'll be a different feeling to the stream. But once that's done, then the book is done. And, uh, and then I can do page layout and then drop in like page numbers and like do the, like, uh, like, like, uh, like in, in Word, dropping all the little, the page number stuff like that and then binding it together into the PDF. And once the PDF is built, um, then, uh, then the final piece will be there and then I can drop that in here and I can just walk you through piece by piece so you guys can see what the mechanics are that we built. So that's, that's it for today. I hit the save button. Um, I don't have much of an outro, so, um, here's my crappy outro. Um, like, subscribe, blah, blah, and thanks for being here.